Last year, um, September 2020, I created a video about a possible pyramid on the continent of Antarctica. And in that video, I looked into the possible theories pointing towards that being a pyramid. And I looked into the scientific explanation as to why it's not a pyramid as well. So today we're going to do something similar. So for a while now, I've been seeing these Facebook posts and I've had people send me messages about a possible massive pyramid in the Peruvian Amazon rainforest. And people claim that it's a pyramid and that it's an artificial man-made structure. If it is an artificial man-made structure, that would make it possibly the biggest pyramid on the planet because um, it's approximately three times higher than the Great Pyramid at Giza, which is already insanely high, so that's crazy. My name is Kaylee, and today we're going to look into the claims made by various people about this being a possible pyramid, and we're also going to look into the counter arguments. Yeah, join me. Along the Peruvian border with Brazil, there's an area known as Sierra del Divisor, this region became a national park in November of 2015 after more than 20 years of Peruvians fighting for the protection of this land. This region is unique in the fact that it's the only mountainous region anywhere in the lowland rainforest. The United States Field Museum described the area as a mountain range rising up dramatically from the lowlands of central Amazonian Peru, which boasts rare and diverse geological formations that occur nowhere else in Amazonia. Deep in the Amazonian rainforest, there are tribes in this region that we have not yet contacted, which will probably stay that way if we're smart. Uh, they are known as the Matses, whom we have contacted, at least a few, and the Isconawa Indians. And it's probably best we leave them alone and just let them do their thing. Their homeland stretches from Peru to Brazil and the area of Sierra del Divisor is known to them as the Watershed Mountains. As far as we know, there are at least 21 different indigenous tribes living in this area and they inhabit approximately 42 settlements. But all of this could be a lot more. As I mentioned, there are still uncontacted tribes and areas we have never been exploring. So a lot of question marks when it comes to that, but approximately that. The most unique feature of this entire landscape is the massive Elkono Peak, which is even visible on a clear day from the Andes. To the ancient inhabitants of this region and possibly even the current inhabitants that live there, this massive extraordinary peak is known as an Andean Apu. An Apu in the ancient religions and mythology of Peru, Bolivia and Ecuador are the spirits of the mountains. Sometimes they even have anthropomorphic characteristics and they're the protectors of the inhabitants in the area. So the reason as to why a lot of people think that this is a pyramid is of course the shape, which I mean that's self-explanatory I think. And then there's the fact that this entire region is mostly unexplored and not researched at all. It's incredibly difficult to access this region and therefore it is mostly unexplored and unknown to the researchers. But that makes people wonder and question, could this strange symmetrically shaped mountain actually be a pyramid? To me, besides the shape and the fact that this region is unexplored, I see no evidence pointing to this being an actual pyramid. I don't see any evidence pointing to this being man-made, being artificial. I just see a mountain. But, I mean, that's my personal opinion. We might differ from that and that's okay. So in my messages and on Facebook, the biggest argument that I've seen that tries to claim that this is an artificial structure made by men is the fact that it's the only high peak in the immediate area. The surroundings of this area are low volcanic mountains and people therefore claim that this 
can't possibly be a dormant volcano. Which, in my personal opinion, it shows exactly that this is a dormant volcano because it's high and it reaches far beyond the rest. So if any of these volcanoes in this mountainous region will burst, it's probably El Cono. The counter argument that I've seen the most used by people is the fact that it's impossible for this to be a pyramid because of its height. 480 meters in height is insane and it would mean that this was the world's highest man-made structure up until a couple of decades ago. It's simply too large to represent a pyramid or man-made structure. Then there's the fact that this peak has the classical form of a volcanic cinder cone, a classic volcanic formation that is known by the experts. Not every cinder cone is similar in shape and size and they are unique just like everything else in the world. The area in which El Cono is located is simply a unique volcanic mountain range. There are many smaller dormant volcanic cones that burst through the canopy. They are just not as high as El Cono. As you can imagine, people would really love lidar scanning to be done in this area. And yeah, I'm one of them. Although I'm personally of the opinion that I do hope that the government will first look into the logistics of that being done before they take any steps. This is one of the last vast areas that are unexplored in the world. It's one of the most remote areas in the world and very little is known about the inhabitants, both wildlife and people living there. What we do know is that more than 300 species of fish, 550 species of birds and 3,500 plant species live in the area together with jaguars, tapirs and more large and rare mammals. The locals who live near this area call it the land of the brave people as the massive trees in this rainforest conceal the waterfalls and fierce rivers that provides water for more than an estimate of 230,000 people. Historically speaking, this part of the Amazon rainforest was unimpacted by the outside world until quite recently, which is why there are still tribes living in this area that have never been in contact with developed humans. No one dared to venture into the rainforest this deep in the past because it was too dangerous. You wouldn't be sure if you would survive it. Unfortunately, that unexplored vastness is now making managing this area and protecting it extremely difficult. If they were to build a road here, they would actually make it easier for hunters and loggers and drug traffickers to travel through this area. It would result in unregulated commercial fishing, hunting and logging. On top of that, it would destroy and restrict the habitat of the animal and human inhabitants of the forest. It would spread disease to the tribal communities and these serious threats could destroy the area in only a few years. So yes, while I find myself wanting LiDAR scanning to be done in this area, I really lean more towards the protection of it. Yes, I love history and I really, really, really love archaeological discoveries. Preserving their habitat, preserving their way of life, keeping the balance that they have in this area, a balance that we developed humans have lost. They live in balance with nature there. These inhabitants, these people, these animals, we should not interfere. It's not our place to interfere here. I really am of the belief of that. But even then, if we find anything on a LiDAR scan, we want to go there and research it on the ground, which is an issue because to travel there, you would need roads and for road building, I mean, it, it, it would destroy what currently is, which in my opinion is not needed. Sometimes it's better to not know what could be than to find out and eventually regret that decision. Not interfering with these tribal communities is in my personal opinion, the best way to go forward. We would only spread disease and threaten their way of life and the balance that they've kept for thousands of years. I'm not sure how long they've been there we will never know so yeah and then again i personally really lean towards this peak being a dormant volcano and not a artificial man-made structure 
but that is my opinion. You are allowed to have your own opinion. I will always keep that open. This is an open-minded conversation about what could be and not what is, because sometimes I do that. And you can make up your own mind what you believe. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click that bell icon if you want to be notified every time I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or click the links in the description down below and I always put videos in the end card. I would also like to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone supporting me from all the tiers and I only read the highest two tiers out loud from Patreon and my members. So thank you Floyd, Barry, Vaughn, Jeff Henderson, DJ, Klaus Jepsen, Ricky, Ira Whiteside, Malias Flavos, Tom Barkwell, Dibbler666, Timothy P. Smith, Robert Brown, Elfa Koberg, Mishes Porsches and Gerald Lamontan. And the channel members of the highest two tiers, Volps Volps, James Fisher, Debo and Ben Oppenheimer. So thank you for watching this and theorizing with me for a moment. And I'll see you in the next one. For those who are wondering what this is, this is the medal that I ran for in the past year. I love it. I recently unpacked it and uh, yeah. I've been playing with it way too much. It's heavy and I like it. Go run for a medal whenever you want. I got it through the Conqueror and uh, I have four challenges set up for me in the future. And um, I haven't ran since September. <laughs> and in that fear... For the third, for the third, for the